Well, I was, I was, we were in Reykjavik, and when I got there, I was like, you know, while I'm here, let's just scope out the situation. And it turns out there's not much of a kiting community in, in, in Reykjavik. You know, Iceland has got a population of 340,000 or so, not very much, so makes sense. But there's one guy, and he has a website. And on this website, it's like, hey, I've got some kites. I do a little bit of kiteboarding. Um, I don't know. Call me. And I was like, okay. So I just called some guy. And he was like, hey, oh, are you an American? You know? And I was like, no, no, no. I'm from Canada, but I'm in Reykjavik. I'm here for a couple of days. I'm right out of town. And he's like, oh, you're into kites? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then we had a little conversation about it, you know, and his his basis was more so kiteboarding. But he was like, yeah, you know, I got a few like, in the garage over here. You know, he's like, he basically explained, he's like, there's like me and like two other people and that's it, you know. But I got in touch with the with the the Icelandic kiting community. I got to see what they were about for a little bit. You know, I got a little description. Um, yeah. You know, hey, listen, this is the type of thing where what I like to do when I go places is get in touch with the fighting game community and see if I can go hang out at a local. But that's not Fuck the kind of thing. Nerds. We don't need them anymore. That's not the kind Who of thing that's happening stick. currently. That's heavy. So, you know, um, that's what we found out. And the dude, who, he, you, like, you, okay, so she was sitting next to me. <laughs> and. You hear this shit? <laughs> and the volume of the excitement of the guy for someone to just call in and be like, hey, so what's up with kites, though? And he was so happy to talk about them. And so really? I'm. if you thought I was having a blast, you should hear you that guy. Unironically recreated on your honeymoon that webcomic about do you want a good time call this number in a bathroom stall <laughs> and it me he meets up with a guy and they go paragliding and he goes i can't believe no one called the number before <laughs> yeah you know and i mean the guy had some good tips you know especially he's like if you do go surfing you want to you want to you don't want to teach yourself he gave some he does teach lessons and he does you know he did give some a heads up but uh so that was there you know um, but besides that, there was there was the actual nation of Iceland, which really uh, small. Like you mentioned, three hundred k, right? Yeah, like, really small. Reykjavik is really the only major city. There's a couple of others that are like um, around the edges that are really, um, you know, like really tiny populations. But you can go out there. Um, I guess notable things are like of course, just gorgeous the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Um, we decided to, uh, drive around, you know, so we basically mm -hmm. rented well, a car. You, could you not just drive around, like, the whole country in, like, a day? Well, that's the plan, right? It was, the plan was to, like, instead of, you know, doing a sort of, like, I don't know, we, um, bus tourism adventure or anything, we're just gonna rent, like, a car and, and do our own little road trip. And we did, it was great. We saw, pretty much, we saw all of it. We saw the whole thing. Um, fortunately, uh, the, the That's whole... That's a weird concept. I went to the country, and I saw the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. It's what, it's what I did with New Zealand, you know? And, and it was super worth it to do it that way. Like, for, for us, like, that type of trip is now just so much more enjoyable. Um, because it's a completely different pace and style from, like, the Japan trips, for example. Right? Mm -hmm. Landing in Japan, having a bunch of subway stops that you know you what you want to go to you know what's going to be there where you want to you know walk around and stuff and you're basically you're taking um a home base and then you're just you know taking the train out public transport out from that spot to a bunch of busy areas is is a very different vibe from no it's just us two in a car and we're driving you know and hey look the fucking northern lights are popping off right there aurora borealis because that's one of the places you can see it, you know? I didn't realize they were that far north. Incredible. Um, got super lucky. Now, excuse me. Got super lucky. Um, and, uh, but, but yeah, so, but uh, I'll say this. So we started off um, kind of just planning a trip around uh, what's called the Ring Road. And mm -hmm. uh, that is the road that is paved that goes along the, the whole edge of the island 
and then the middle of the island you can access because there's things called F roads, but they're kind of like why the fuck would you want to go there? And more like why the F roads? Yeah, and the, and like no. when you go look at like what the F roads are, it's like one you have to have a car that's legally approved to drive on an F road because it's not really a road as much as it is just an open field, and then you get to a river and you have to drive through the river, and then okay. after that there's canyon and you have to not fall off the canyon. And okay. that's the middle of the... And it's just... It's fuck... It's insane. And that's why everyone lives in Reykjavik. So you live on the edge, on the, in the on the contour, and you don't go to the middle. And that's all fine. Um, lots of beautiful sights and sounds just doing that anyway. Um, you know, the mountains are, are glorious vistas, and it fucking rains all the time. But when it doesn't, it's, 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 it's also beautiful. Sheep everywhere. There's night sheep. Um, the... the the one of the first things we did was we landed and went and checked out this area called the Blue Lagoon, which is an alien ass landscape because the entire horizon is lava, rocks dried over with moss on top, and then no trees, no brush, no other vegetation, just rocks and moss. And you're like, I'm on Namek, I'm looking at fucking Namek, you know? Um. We go around. You know, it looks it looks like Death Stranding. Yes, in fact, you know the river. You know the suspiciously like Death Stranding. You know the the Hartman Lake. Mm hmm. The Hart Lake, the yeah. crater. Yeah, I went there. Oh yeah. And was like there. That's it. That's the crater. There's the lake. I'm standing on it. Um. Absolutely saw that. Um, These all sound like good places to fly a kite. Uh, yeah, it was a little. It was kind of raining at that time, but you want to get flat ground, not heights. You not not heights. You want flat ground. You know, um, I hiked up a dormant volcano. Um, found out. Willie, that you I'm, live on a dormant volcano. Well, I looked that up, and not exactly. Mont Royal is not exactly confirmed to be a dormant volcano. There has been lava. Um, that was beneath it like years and years ago but there's never been any proof of any eruption here so it doesn't exactly count there the, are, the next one will be really big there are like four or five confirmed possible volcanoes in Canada and they're not here you know uh, looking look, finding this out was a part of this trip uh, so uh, yeah did that and then that was just a massive insane thing to just look into the basin of um, I was also, I, I discovered I'm, I'm a very grouchy uphill hiker, um, and I'm, I'm not Are a you? fan of, yeah, I'm not a fan of, not a big hiking guy, I think. So, you know what's really weird is that um, you, you, people who can see me or know what I look like, I'm a tiny fat bitch. This is true. Uh, but I really like hiking up. Like, I remember back when I was on uh, Inari Mountain in Kyoto, like... I looked like I was going to die, and Paige kept telling me to go back down to the bottom of the mountain. And I was like, I got to get to the top of the mountain. I got to see what's up there. And I did it. Mm -hmm. And I felt like shit the next day. Yeah. But yeah. I did it. Yeah. No, I did do all the hiking that was uh, attempted, uh, uh, which I, I, I was hoping it would be none. But we did do some. Um, more like one and then another. But I, I yeah, I'm not. Uh, it's just not my thing. Especially not my thing when I'm the absolute least in shape I have ever been in my entire life coming oh, off yeah. of the couch of pandemic, right? <sighs> Listen, the pandemic couch is comfy and soft. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the that's a thing. Um, you know, of course, too, you know, that like it goes without saying, but the supreme weirdness and shock of just outside world in itself like and being immersed in it so like from being ripped out of you know uh, uh uh our yeah my house and thrown into like outside world is just like whoa this is all so have, have nuts you been and in weird a situation where like you like this is this is more of a pandemic question i guess how often do you go outside today today no, in general. 
in general not often and even with or without like I, a lot of days go by without any outside okay because like i had that hit me real bad right before we got uh the pooch yeah right and it was one of the reasons we got the pooch which was uh we were realizing that we were like spending like 20 days without opening the door mm -hmm. you know and we yeah. were like oh we're getting weird and yeah. this is not healthy and we will never be able to readjust and so now i walk the dog twice a day and so like it's like oh breath of fresh air but if you went from like mostly isolated to like the vast expanses of a foreign landscape crazy yeah, that's probably pretty extreme crazy um and but you know like and it, it was it was a re-immersion into society of sorts and then some um and like yeah and it was it was something that you know you're kind of just you're you're aware of it the whole time and 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 you know um it also is affecting like how we plan things and you know we we had our days of like okay well um this day like you know fuck going to see this thing we got to go do a pcr test you know and did a couple mm -hmm. of those and whatever but um yeah it was Still a corona free absolutely fantastic Yep. Took uh four five four or five tests over the course of this entire time. So, um yeah. Um anyway, that uh was cool. I mentioned night sheep because that's a thing. There are sheep, there are many sheep yeah, that are that quirked my eyes. What there are Icelandic the sheep, there are Icelandic horses. They're unique. Okay. Uh, they're a special breed that has been unique to Iceland. They're a pride of Iceland, even though they're kind of tiny and they walk funny because they're too. Instead of doing like front hooves, back hooves, they uh, in in rhythm, they have side hooves, side hooves in rhythm. So they've got a really so they weird kind of jaunt. Yeah, a little trot, a little trot. Now, um, you you describe them as night sheep. Are these sheep that can only be seen at night? The so the dead of night in Reykjavik is just you're in the city. The dead of night when you're out near uh, Mjatvin or Akweri or uh, a number of unpronounceable places that we just decided to give our own names to. I'm just gonna go with Borky Land. Yeah, like there's like a 13 or 14 letter name for this thing that we just called it Snail Fest because the word <laughs> snail. And FES were in it, so Snail Fest Peninsula. Good enough. Um, so when you're out there and it's nighttime, um, we, for example, went out and we did a, um, there was a, a hot spring, you know, because they've got a bunch of these like natural hot spring things where they take the heated water from the earth and they put it into a pool and you go sit there and you, yeah, you have a good time. And then you're coming back from that and it's like there is nothing to light your way on the road except for the reflective posts that are on the side of the highway and the night stars and occasionally a night sheep if you're unlucky and that's a sheep that has decided that this is the perfect time to walk into the road oh just a nice heavy stupid animal because it's one of those islands where you're not get, you're not seeing deer crossing the road you're not seeing there's no random predators in life that, it's another one of those places where it's like yeah the la the life here is the shit that we brought you know there's basically nothing before we got it, here there was it was very very like you know yeah it's, so it's it's whatever you see is what they brought there pretty much um and there's a lot of different kinds of things, admittedly, but running across the roads at a random point in time, you're gonna, you're, it's gonna be the night sheep, you know. Um. So you got that. Um. You got uh just a lot of really quaint and weird, like little village that is basically like uh, it looks like we pull off to like an abandoned village off the side of the highway at one point just looking for like a bathroom and a coffee and it's this entire area where there's only one lady and she's working at like what what, what is usually i guess like a guest house and mm -hmm. no one else is around in the in this entire village and she's like yeah things shut down during the winter because that season is just 
there's no one that's going to be here. So the people are all gone for months and months until they come back next summer. And it's like, oh, yeah, right. This is one of those places where they literally will have 24 hours of daylight for a period of the summer. You know, so so you, you yeah, you can actually show up in July and have a day of like endless day, you know. Um, really, 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 really nuts, but but cool. Um, saw it all, saw saw pretty much all of it. You know, we really did get a chance. There's a couple of places we didn't go to. We didn't get to check out the West Fjords or anything, but got to see the side of a glacier. Took a um a boat out to the wall and looked at this giant chunk of ice that is basically a thousand years of history you're staring at because it's got the like layers of ice and then every time there's a black line going across it it's where a volcano erupted and then time continued you know and then another volcano erupted and then time continued and um it's a very cool thing you know and as long as you just kind of mentally ignore the details such as well the only reason we're able to uh boat out to this glacier and look at it is because the water the body of water we're on exists because of global warming and oh cool and it wouldn't have been here otherwise and uh every day this entire thing slides forward by 30 centimeters oh cool but annually See, look, it's the helping out the tourism but annually it recedes by hundreds of meters because the whole thing is melting simultaneously and sliding forward and um the ice formations that we had to drive around on the boat uh, change every few months so three four months it's got a completely different lake with huge um icicles and uh, not icicles um uh, icebergs sticking out of it and shit so yeah just you know don't think too hard about that and enjoy oh, cool. right see they're trying to see they're telling you that because they don't want you to look around and look too closely and see the bits and pieces of the ice wall Is that where we were? That would explain it. I mean, you were as close as either of us have ever been. Um, Right across from that, you have the Black Sand Beach, which I have been a beach snob for years. Whenever Mm -hmm. someone's like, hey, we got a beach here in Canada. I'm like, oh, do you? Is it mud (laughs) next to mud? Canadian beaches are... uh, And The best one you're going to get is like a decent lake beach at best enjoy stepping on a slimy thing that's moving and opening your eyes underwater to see what it is and realizing all you can see is the brown mud because it's mud and mud water anyway um so no it's a little bit of a of a of a thing but you know with with caribbean beaches in my brain uh we went to the ice beaches here and they are a completely different thing and they're just metal as fuck because they're black sand Mm -hmm. and the water is is basically clear and thus black and it washes ice up onto the shore regularly so it's not good for swimming no it's probably death for that but some dudes were kayaking that seems ballsy it's pretty fucking metal it's pretty cool um that was that was an interesting phenomenon uh, of the different things they had going on. And, you know, and it's the kind of island where basically, you know, on the last night out, just driving to the airport, um, it's like, what's that light? Oh, 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 well, before that, um, yeah, we, we caught the Northern Lights once, really lucky. Um, we thought, so basically we saw them, or we, we saw what would look like them, and we're like, oh my god, this big red hue in the sky, is that the Aurora Borealis? And then the guy working at the hotel was like, nah, that's just the next town over, idiots. And we're like, oh, okay, damn. But then, but then when we went out to the mountainside village, we saw uh, a streak of light across the sky that moved really weirdly quickly. And we were like, that has to, no, there's no way that's not it. So then we said, fuck it, and looked at the map and found a nearby golf course um, and then just drove to like the parking lot where it was really, really dark and we're able to just kind of, you know, lean on the car, look up and, you know, get some nice, like actual Northern Lights, uh, experience. Um, and the first thing I'll say is the pictures don't 
convey how fast it moves. It's constantly in flux. It looks like what a screen. What is the magnetosphere? It looks like a it looks like a window screensaver in terms of how quickly the shapes are moving. Every thirty seconds it's it's taking on a different shape. It's very, that very might cool. Be the most mundane way I have ever heard anyone refer <laughs> to one of the natural wonders of the world. Yes. That but might the... be the most fucking gauche ass lame way to refer to this incredible fucking natural phenomenon and it's yet like window screen saver. and yet you know the exact speed i'm describing no i mean i'm also looking at it in a video right now it's really quick um very cool and of course while we're up there you know being these foreigners in a in a, in a an area that's like you know private um some car comes driving up and does a quick fucking 360 and then I see the flash of a camera, and then it drives off into the distance, and I'm like, uh-huh, okay, I guess that's our sign. And then we get in and start heading out, and then another car starts coming back our way, and it's like, all right, all right, yes, the random weirdos were just here to look at the Northern Lights, but you're like, why are you near our golf course? What are you doing? You know, so we got out of there. Um, but it was worth it. It was great. You know, if they ever gave you any shit, you could make fun of them for their incest app. What? Oh, you don't know about this? There's an app in Iceland about preventing incest. Why? You, because because in Iceland, uh, it's it's an island nation that has only about a population of about 300,000. 340,000 you said but the last names are not matriarchal or patriarchal it's the name of your dad son or daughter or whatever so you would never know if somebody was your yep. cousin yep. by their yep. name because of the odds yeah okay so very familiar with that um you know not just because of the fucking the the, the madden town revisited but also because uh uh, Punchwife has told me about how the Acadians of East Canada um, also have a thing where you got to be careful oh, about cool. that. And uh, they, uh, someone in her, someone in her family does like the family trees of everyone that's like in the area and stuff. And I think it says like if you are not connected to someone else from this area within five generations uh the test is free and they've never given a free test so what you're saying is that the family tree tree gets a little gnarled in some places gets a little gnarled apparently you know and so but so yeah you hear that for an island and it's not that surprising it turns out that's a thing in many old country as it as it as it were these big population spike areas like these these you know north america and india and like you know all these places in the world and china where you just have a ton of people all together you know where we don't you don't ever have to think about that but there are small communities where you still kind of do i um, mean all jokes aside i went international i'm not worried about it at all <laughs> yeah i'm not too worried about it either yeah, I would think that you're you're in the clear. <laughs> but um, so we saw that, and uh, you know I'm sure other things might come back to me. But for now, driving out on the way last day, um, went back to Reykjavik. Actually, had a little bit of a time to just enjoy the city and see what that was like, and that was a cool little 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 fun thing. Um, on the last day driving out, it's like there's a weird light in the sky as we approach the airport and as you you focus in on it it's orange and it's very bright and it's very very clearly an erupting volcano live oh, cool right there and you're like yeah all right casual erupting volcano totally normal everyone casual. seems fine no big deal you know, and I'm just like, yep, okay, we've seen it. We did it. You know? Um, 
Thank you, Earth's Magma, for timing this for your particular needs. Perfect. You know, and I gotta say, overall, um, the the uh, uh, what was really surprising is like so that's I give you that population, but the number of people at all times is is quite a bit higher because do you remember a number of years ago when a a volcano erupted in Iceland that shut down air travel internationally? Yeah, because of the dust kick up. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. So that thing was huge and it was on the news in every country and when they were showing off the uh you know the dust kick up and, and the country where all all flights were shut down or that caused all flights to be shut down people saw a really pretty island and went oh shit i should go there and so it became a huge uh population a, a, a huge tourist destination because of that thing now I had no idea. This was just a place that was always on my bucket list of like, oh, that'd be a pretty place to go see one day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it turns out that that happened in the last 10 years. So they basically now have, they went from having very little to now having like a group of about 2 million tourists for the 340,000 actual people from Iceland, you know, on a regular basis. Remember... It's a wild change. I remember a while ago, the like one of the largest little big deals that Iceland or Reykjavik would encounter would be like uh, the fucking Eve Online convention, where like the heads of the Eve Online government would come and meet with the fucking devs out there, and that was their big tourist thing. Hmm. That feels pretty quaint, all things considered. Yeah. Um. You know, and I did experience, of course, you, uh, some of the 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 bork here and there. I think the funniest one being uh, Disney characters with the label uh, "Imagine Bullyland" on them, and I'm like, "What?" And it's like, "Hey, look! It's all of your favorite Bullyland characters, like Moana and Mickey." <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're like what what is what is happening and it's like yeah that's 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 what they're called there Why? leave it alone i don't that's that's the way it goes you know um and uh uh of course walking through catching a random shop playing uh icelandic reggae that was pretty fun how's um, that sound it sounds like icelandic reggae Okay. And when I asked the the the, the 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 lady at the store, like, I was like, is that a big thing here? And she's like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I just saw this random CD and decided to pop it in. And she kind of looked and she's like, it must be very weird for you. Sorry. And I was like, no, 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 it's actually quite hilarious. <laughs> you know, so uh, that was funny. Um, yeah. And then, you know, whatever. Like, that's it. That That's that's that that was that was Iceland.